Good morning, everyone. Let's enjoy chess radiographs with Dr. Y. I'm Dr. Y. And first section is about the normal chest radiograph. This is a chest radiograph of a young, healthy man from back to front, without disease and also without any abnormal findings. First question is, what is normal chest radiograph? I would say chest radiograph of normal finding is without abnormal, without unusual findings. Is this somewhat ridiculous definition? Okay. Second is chest radiograph is a two-dimensional image of three-dimensional human body structure of thorax. So we need imagination to think and diagnose the film. And the third is we will go to the white area and then black area. White area is a central areas with many anatomic structures, so-called mediastinum, with high attenuation area. And the black area is peripheral lung field made of pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein, and airway and alveolar. This image is a mean IP projection of a chest CT, which means minimal intensity projection. That means lowest Hounsfield unit of air is black. So it can be easily show us the large airways. This is trachea and right main bronchus, upper lobe bronchus, bronx intermedius, right middle lobe bronchus, lower lobe bronchus, left main bronchus, left upper lobe bronchus, lingula segments, and left lower lobe bronchus. This is normal chest radiograph. We need imagination and knowledge of these large airway structures to see, to watch the large airway in the chest radiograph. Yes, here is a trachea, right main bronchus, right upper lobe bronchus, bronx intermediates, middle lobe bronchus, lower lobe bronchus, left main bronchus, upper lobe bronchus, lingula segments, and lower lobe bronchus. Now you can see the large airways. I removed the background the chest radiograph here. Now you can say the name of the bronchus here. Okay. Let's move to the normal chest radiograph. Now, this is trachea, right main bronchus, upper lobe bronchus, bronx intermediates, middle lobe bronchus, lower lobe bronchus, left main bronchus, upper lobe bronchus, lingula, and lower lobe bronchus. Okay, easier than before. This is contrast enhanced chest CT of a coronal image. We are now looking for left margin of a mediastinum. This is left subclavian artery. This is aortic arch. It can also be called a first mogul. Mogul is a small mound of snow. And this is pulmonary trunk, also named as a second mogul. This is left atrial appendage. It is usually flat, 
but when it is enlarged, it can be third mogul sign. It means left atrial appendage is enlarged in case of such as mitral valvular heart disease. And fourth mogul is, as you see, left ventricle itself. These four structures compose left side margin of chest radiograph media stinum. Now you see left subclavian artery, aortic knob, pulmonary trunk, sunken or flat normal uh, left atrial appendage and left ventricle. Now I remove the background chest radiograph. Uh, with this chest radiograph, now you can say left margin of mediastinum. This is left subclavian artery, aortic arch, pulmonary trunk, the second mogul, and flat left atrial appendage and left ventricle. This is normal side of left mediastinum. Let's move to right side of mediastinal margin. From the top, it is right brachiocephalic vein. After joining with the left brachiocephalic vein, it becomes superior vena cava, SVC, and then becomes right atrium. This Three structures define the right side of a mediastinum. Let's move to the chest radiograph. As you see, right brachiocephalic vein is not well defined on chest radiograph, but here it is surely is. And then this is superior vena cava and right atrium. And sometimes this area can be triangular with the hepatic vein or inferior vena cava or pericardial fat. Once again, let's define the right mediastinal margin. This is right brachiocephalic vein, superior vena cava, and then bulging convex area of right atrium and then triangular area with hepatic vein or inferior vena cava or abundant extrapericardial fat. Let's look at the lower side of the thorax. This is coronal image of chest CT. This is the highest point of diaphragm. Actually, it is the ridge of the diaphragm. This is right side diaphragm, hepatic vein, and left side diaphragm. Right side is a little higher with this liver under and left side this is stomach and this is spleen. And in the chest radiograph we can see the pulmonary vessels here below the diaphragm line because uh, this, ear, this area is also the lung. Below the diaphragm ridge, there is a posterior lung and anterior lung located here. Let's move to the black areas of a peripheral lung. This lung area is not complicated and open field, so it is relatively easy to find out something wrong something abnormal in the chest radiograph. This image is MRI angiography of a pulmonary artery. And now you can see superior vena cava, right atrium, right ventricle, outflow tract, right pulmonary artery, upper lobar and descending into lobar pulmonary artery. And on the left side, this is left main pulmonary artery with upper lower branch and descending pulmonary artery or 
interlobar pulmonary artery. Let's match the pulmonary artery here on chest radiograph. This is right side pulmonary artery, right upper lower branch, and descending pulmonary artery, interlobar pulmonary artery going this way. And this is left pulmonary artery, upper lower branch, and interlobar descending pulmonary artery. Left side pulmonary artery is higher than right side, so we used to say your left pulmonary hilum is higher than right side. Let's imagine pulmonary artery again. This is pulmonary outflow tract, right side, upper, descending, left side, upper, and descending. Let's see again. Upper, descending, interlobar. The medial side is bronchus intermedius. And left pulmonary artery, upper, interlobar, descending branch. Although thorax aorta is eminent, this is not for aortogram, this is for pulmonary venogram. Let's see. This is superior pulmonary vein of right side, inferior pulmonary vein of right side, and left superior, left inferior pulmonary vein. This is left atrium. Just look like somewhat crab appearance. And then left ventricle, and then aortic arch. Let's move to the normal chest radiograph. Can you imagine the pulmonary vein here? Yes. This area will be superior pulmonary vein, and this is inferior pulmonary vein, and this area will be superior pulmonary vein, and this is inferior pulmonary vein going into the left atrium. Let's repeat the pulmonary venous system. This is right superior pulmonary vein, right inferior pulmonary vein, left superior pulmonary vein, left inferior pulmonary vein, and then left atrium, and then left ventricle, ascending aorta, aortic arch, and descending thoracic aorta. Let's move to the chest radiograph. Superior pulmonary vein is usually not evident on chest radiographs, but inferior pulmonary vein is usually evident. We can see very clearly inferior pulmonary vein here. And left atrium is here. And when left atrium is enlarged as mitral babula disease, the crinal angle is widened. And then aortic arch here. Now I can see more. So let's go to the peripheral lung. On the peripheral lung field, high density is only pulmonary artery and pulmonary venous system. Airways are usually not evident because they contain air. Now we know the name of the pulmonary artery here, here on left side, and pulmonary vein here, here, and then here. So if we remember these structures, uh, and the chest radiograph, we can clearly see the peripheral lung and easily find the abnormal findings. In this MR angiography of a pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein, we see that in the central portion, the vessels are bigger, 
thicker and denser than the peripheral tapered branches. As a summary, what do we need to enjoy the chest radiographs? Number one is, most importantly, an atomic knowledge of the chest structure. Permeatry, permeate vein, cardiac structure, great vessel, and large airways. And as you see, chest radiograph is two-dimensional image of a three-dimensional structure. We need imagination to solve the problem. And the third is familiarity with the film. Let's summarize the normal structure of the mediastinum in the normal chest radiograph. From the left side, from the top, left subclavian artery, and then aortic arch, first mogul, and then left pulmonary trunk, second mogul, left atria appendage, and then left ventricle, fourth mogul. From the right side, from the up, right brachiocephalic vein, and then continues to superior vena cava, and then enter into right atrium. And in the inferior portion, there may be inferior vena cava or hepatic vein. Like, subscribe will be a big support to me. Thank you very much.